Welcome to a brief discussion of surface tension. Surface tension is the continuum scale effect caused by molecular scale actions where two immiscible fluids share a distinct interface. By immiscible fluids, we mean fluids that do not mix, for example, water and oil. More commonly, we think of surface tension occurring between water and air. In general, surface tension may occur with any liquid gas or liquid liquid interface. However, where gases mix, there can be no surface tension effects. The surface tension force is the force that is everywhere tangent to the surface, that is, to our interface, that is between the fluids. Surface tension forces can be thought of by an analogy to pressure forces. A pressure force is acting on a surface and is always normal to the surface is given by the force is equal to the pressure times the area. Now in contrast, the surface tension force acts along a line rather than the area and is always tangential to the line rather than normal to the surface. So this is given by the force is equal to a surface tension coefficient times length. So we can think of the surface tension coefficient as the force per unit length that is exerted tangential to the interface by the molecular action of the two fluids. See how this is similar to the pressure, which is the force per unit area, exerted over the area normal. Now our surface tension coefficient is usually given the Greek letter sigma. F sub sigma is usually used to represent the force exerted by surface tension. Our basic equation is simply F of sigma is equal to sigma L. Here L is the length of the line of action. So in our surface tension problems, we typically look up the appropriate value of sigma for the fluids at the interface and then we have to find the length of the line of action. The direction over which surface tension acts becomes an, an important part of most problems. Keep in mind its surface tension. That is, it acts equally in all directions, tangent to a surface. So if we have some surface and choose a point, we can draw tangent arrows outward from that point. It's always stretching away from the point. Otherwise, we're pushing on a string. Surface tension never acts inwards towards a point. Now let's look at direction of the surface tension at a solid boundary. So if we think about the fluid acting on the boundary, then the fluid is pulling away from the boundary. It's pulling down, in this case, the fluid acting on the wall. But if we want to think about the force of the wall acting on the fluid, it's equal and opposite to that. So whenever the boundary is acting on the fluid, you get opposite than when you're talking about the fluid acting on the boundary. The key point here is make sure you think about whether you want the force of the fluid on the wall or the force of the wall on the fluid. Surface tension along a solid always acts at some contact angle. The contact angle depends upon both the fluid and the solid properties. For example, if we have an air-water interface with solid glass, we have a contact angle that's close to zero degrees. The example here shows a contact angle of about 20 degrees. Zero degrees would be the dashed red line being straight up and down along the wall. Now we also have contact angles that work in the opposite direction and here we have a, an air mercury interface with a solid glass boundary that has a contact angle of 140 degrees. Our formal definition of the contact angle is measured from the solid through the denser, denser liquid to the interface. Large contact angles are often called phobic, that is the solid pushes the interface 
away. Sometimes it's convenient to think about these large angles by their supplementary angle, that is 180 degrees minus theta, and we'll append the designation phobic so we know it pushes away, or that is that the interface is pushed down along the solid. So in the previous case, the air mercury glass has a phobic angle of 40 degrees, 180 minus 140. So why does it behave like that? Well, the molecular chemistry of the interaction where these two immiscible fluids meet a solid is really complicated. This is beyond the scope of this course and would be typically, typically in a physics continuum mechanic course, mechanics course. What you need to remember is one, what are the contact angles? What do you do with them? How do you put them into a problem? You need to see our class notes for that. Two, how do you compute the surface tension force along a line? Figuring out where the line of action is becomes the key part of setting up a problem. Three, drawing a system diagram to determine the surface tension force on a solid or the solid effect of the, on the surface through the surface tension. Those are two different ways of thinking about a problem and you need to be able to set problems up in both ways. That's the end of our talk of surface tension.